<clears throat> All right, so, you know, this is the last time we have to talk about it, um, you know, which is um, always one of the issues, you know, with you play the game and when you lose, you got to deal with that Saturday and Saturday night. Then you got to watch it as a staff Sunday, so you relive it. And then you got to watch with your players Monday morning, relive it. And, you know, you, you want to move on and then you got to come here. So, um, you know, to recap it, as you guys know, in here you saw I was very frustrated after the game. And I think that just, you know, explaining to the players today, you know, I think that's a thing about experience. And as you get older, um, just understanding, just like you do with your own children, like they don't usually understand what they're going through and what that moment is and how rare that moment may be. Um, you know, so I was just frustrated for our players to be that close, to have the ball in your hands against Alabama, you know, controlling the outcome. You know, if you take some time off the clock and score, you, you beat Alabama. And that's a rare thing. Um, I told him today, you know, I was in that situation 13 years ago, ball in our hands at Tennessee, um, going down to kick a field goal to beat Alabama. So it <clears throat> doesn't happen very often. So that's why there was a lot of frustration in it, you know, and, um, you know, probably with what they say with the SEC scheduling uh, change coming up, you know, we're not going to play them. Ole Miss and Alabama's are not going to play every year. So, you know, even less chance for those things to happen. So that's frustrating as you watch the film and see all the missed opportunities. Um, commend their team, like I said, after the game. Commend Bryce especially. Um, put his Superman cape on and made some unbelievable plays uh, in that game. And you know, that's why he's the Heisman Trophy winner. So, and we had a chance to finish the game and, and didn't do it. So, it is what it is. We got to move on. Uh, Arkansas, a very talented team that played really, in a lot of ways, outplayed LSU Saturday. Um, and really had a bunch of chances with backup quarterbacks to beat LSU. So that tells you a lot about how good they play at times and um, how good they just played Saturday and a difficult place to play at night and weather. So uh, we got to get back on track, have a really good week, and prepare really well. Lane, last year I know you had Matt, Sam, Chance, and other guys who were kind of the, the rallying voice in the locker room after losses or even after that Arkansas game. After LSU and even these couple of days, who who is kind of you seen be that voice in the locker room to just kind of keep the guys focused? Uh, I, I don't know that. I mean, like I told him today, you had a similar challenge before with losing your first game of the year, you know, at LSU and um, came back and regroup, regrouped and went on the road and won the next week at A&M. So, you know, you want players to do that stuff, but at, you know, again, as head coach, you know, that's part of your job to do that and not rely on the players to do that and, and walk these guys through it. So, um, you know, this will be challenging. Uh, there was a, a lot made uh, during the game and after the game about officiating on, on social media and whatnot, um, which some hits and some non-calls. Uh, you retweeted some stuff. Could we just get your thoughts on the officiating from that game? Yeah, you probably missed me by a day. I probably would have said a lot of different things. But like I said, I've you know, put the game behind us. We can't go back and win the game by calling a different play, changing something. So um, it is what it is. Um, you know, obviously the Jackson part and after the whistle stuff, um, you know, is disappointing. Talked to his mom, um, you know, just kind of apologize, even though it's out of our control. So, you know, so like she mentioned, it's just a shame her son gets treated different based off what SEC program that he's at um, on game day and protected different. So, um, you know, is what it is. And, you know, we move on. I suspect you won't answer and this. And let's make sure that quote was right. Like she said, not me. I really don't want to get fined today. You can't find me for what someone else says. This is why I suspect you won't answer this, but th th there was a pervasive thought around the league that different programs are treated different ways, that different 
programs are officiated different ways through different filters. You've been on both ends of that spectrum. Do you see a difference? Hmm. Um, I mean, that's been talked about for a long time, being around this conference. Um, I know fans do whatever, but as coaches. Um, so I'll just say I've been on both sides of it. And um, I'll leave it at that. Um, looking ahead to Arkansas a little bit, you guys played a pretty crazy game last year, the 52 to 51 game. Um, what do you remember from that game just as a, as a coach? Uh, it's a reminder to me that every game's independent of a different game. Um, the year before had been low scoring. Um, you know, we really struggled against that defense and would not have predicted a high scoring game, 100 points between the two. So every game's different, every week's different. And um, that's just a really good reminder. You know, just like you can go, go into a game and look at LSU and Arkansas, and most people would have said, okay, well, that's probably going to be lopsided based off of what had happened the week before, Liberty versus Alabama outcomes. So um, it just shows you every week's different and every game's different. Uh, hey, Coach. So what impresses you most about this Arkansas team? Uh, I think uh, how hard they play. Um, especially answering the call after, you know, the Liberty game to come back for LSU um, early kick and to play as hard as they did, force whatever seven sacks and play really well up front, um, you know, says a lot. You mentioned just how emotional that game on Saturday was. Um, what kind of has been the response you've seen from the players as well as the coaching staff? Well, I'm. I mean, it's my job to lead, so just kind of like I said to you guys, you know, I went through stuff Saturday night, Sunday morning, and, you know, and you have to fight that, especially as a coach. Like, I, there's not an hour during those 24 hours or 15 minutes that some thought of something different, do something different than a game, give it to a different player, call a different play, manage the situation different. Um, you know, that that's just how I'm wired, so. I just have to teach them, hey, you've got to get to the point where you have to realize you cannot change. We, we're not going to win the game. We can't go backwards. And so um, hopefully they'll just follow my lead. Uh, he, I know you noted or confirmed Zach had that concussion, missed the second half. Just how is he? I kind of guess where is he in the process of all that now? Um, I mean, we just walked through today, so I don't have any more information on that. Um, you know. That has been an issue statistically scoring wise when he goes out and not kind of having that one two punch. Um, you know, but so it is what it is. Um, I guess just kind of going big picture for a second. Um, I noticed you had that kind of unique post with Jackson there on, on Instagram that you retweeted a post about him. I'm interested. I guess how much um, thought you put into your own social media activity with NIL and, you know, are those posts designed to help your players reach their goals in, in that market? Um, I mean, sometimes there's a lot of thought, sometimes there's not very much thought uh, to my social media as you can kind of figure out. So um, it just kind of depends. But obviously we always want to help the players and you know, all situations and um, enhancing their brand um, so they can maximize, you know, what they can get. Hey, Coach, can you shed any light on uh, Michael Triggs' situation right now? Yeah, he came back and practiced last week. Um, you know, uh, I don't think was fully prepared to play in the game um, from all that time off and coming back, and so he may be this week. Is there anything different in a game plan going into a game where you could be you know, low 20s and the wind and all that stuff, or is it just football? Um, I, I think our players are good. I'm the issue, so um, I, I don't – I've tried everything. I was freezing during that game. So I even went and stood on the little bit of sun was on that end at one point during the game, just trying anything. So I have cold weather issues. but. Um, Luckily, I don't think our players do because I didn't see that at all out there. And you do see some teams, especially receivers, shut down, you know, in that weather, and I didn't see any of that. 
Lane, Arkansas played two backup quarterbacks, never saw their first stream guys Saturday. Do you game plan for all three guys possibly this coming Saturday? Um, I mean, I don't know. It sounds like <clears throat> KJ will be back just from what they've said. and um, I feel like Sam kind of doesn't play a lot of games in the media and just kind of says what it is with injuries and stuff. So I think he's been pretty open to expect him back. All right, guys, thanks. Thank <laughs>